Hi Yogi and welcome to another episode of The Breathing Club with me Oshana. In this particular class we'll be looking at a technique known as Sama Vritti Pranayama and as always I'll be giving you just a little bit of background on that technique, I'll be talking about its benefits, I'll also give you a few pointers, some tips and tricks to really maximize those benefits for yourself in your own practice and finally we will move through the technique together in real time and I'll of course guide you all the way and for those of you who want to hop to specific points in this video I will leave some uh, timestamps in the description so that you can do that otherwise we'll dive right into the introduction here so of course my preference is always to actually dissect the word itself first so in this case samavriti is again made up of two component words the first being sama which means equal and the second being riti which means the ripples of the mind so in this technique, essentially what we're trying to do is to equalize the inhalation as well as the exhalation. We're trying to make them the same length and intensity as each other. And we're also bringing in the pauses between those, those two components of the breath to become part of this sort of bigger picture of how the breath affects the body so that we're really trying to create an equanimous state of body and mind through the breath. And as I've sort of already mentioned, really we have to understand the four component parts of every single breath that we take here. So the first of course is the inhale, which is known as puraka, the second is the internal retention known as antara kumbhaka. So this is the pause after your inhale. The third is the exhalation, which is known as reshaka. And finally, we have the external retention. So the pause after your exhale known as bahya kumbhaka. Now, Understanding and being able to really separate out the breath brings us really to the first benefit of this practice, which is that we're really refining our awareness of the breath here. So, you know, whereas some of the previous techniques uh, maybe looked at a different aspect of our breathing here, we're really looking at these individual component parts and trying to understand them better in order to really harness that understanding for ourselves in more advanced practices. Of course, it also has a very calming effect on the body and mind when we are bringing the breath into perfect equilibrium and equally bringing our body and mind into that state of being. And finally, that state of being really lends itself for a very high level of concentration and meditation practice. So this technique is often used as a precursor to long meditation practices. Um, and then in terms of pointers, Firstly, you can use this technique with your natural breath, but it is often used in combination with an Ujjayi Pranayama practice, which I will cover at a later point. So you might like to revisit this technique at that stage. Um, I would also say very important to note that you can do this technique without holding the breath, without the breath retention points. I will initially guide you through the technique without pausing the breath and then I will give you the option at the end. Really important to note that if you are pregnant or you have very high or very low blood pressure, you are advised not to hold your breath for long periods of time. So I would say stick with the first version and just skip the last part of this video. Finally, um, I would say Similarly to our previous exercise in which we were pausing the breath, a lot of people when they get to that stage of kumbhakas and understanding how to hold the breath, there's a sense that we're straining to hold the breath rather than allowing that moment to be also a moment of relaxation. Um, so if you can 
really try to prevent that from happening. Try to prevent really grasping for the inhale to come in as soon as you release the holding of the breath. Uh, I know it's, it's a very tricky thing to do when you first start introducing pauses in the breath, but I would say it's better to pause less or not at all than to be really holding on to the breath in that way. You'll learn a lot more if you dial it back. And finally, uh, I would suggest that if you don't have something to sit on, that you grab yourself a couple of pillows, maybe a couple of books or blankets so that you can slightly elevate your sitting bones because this is the first class where we will be exploring the idea of sitting for our breathing practice. So we kind of have to find the perfect way of sitting before we can really focus on the breath. For a lot of people, having the legs crossed is more comfortable. If you have very deep external rotation, um, for me, that's quite a natural thing, then you might have the heels in one line. And really what you want is that the thighs are rolling out so you can actually help yourself by using your hands to guide the thighs backwards towards the space behind you. And once you feel that that, you know, I tend to just use both my hands, lean slightly forward and guide the thighs away from the front of the body. And that's usually enough. Uh, if you're sitting upright, just, and once you've adjusted your thighs, you can have a brief feel of your lower back. So if the lower back is already rounding in this position, you want to lift your sitting bones a little bit higher, maybe grab another book or pillow to sit a little bit taller. And you can rest your hands on top of the knees or thighs here, just in a comfortable position. It really helps at this point to close the eyes completely and just explore how the posture actually feels internally to you. So you could shift your body weight a few times forwards and back to really establish the perfect resting point for your body on top of the sitting bones. So that point where you're not leaning too far back or too far forward, you're perfectly balanced. And then you can shift a few times from the left and right sitting bones. Sort of notice if you're leaning more towards one side compared to the other. And the reason we want to sit this way for our breathing practice is really because there are three diaphragms in the upper body which are involved in every single breath we take. So of course the obvious one is the solar plexus diaphragm that sits at the base of the rib cage but possibly less obvious is of course the pelvic floor is also involved and you might notice that when you sneeze or laugh a lot you can feel the pelvic floor moving and thirdly the throat also has a diaphragm that of course allows the breath to come into the lungs and ideally when we're doing our breathing practices and when we're sitting for meditation we want these three diaphragms to be perfectly stacked on top of one another because it really facilitates a breath that is as easy as fluid as it can be. So once you've established the position of your spine, the position of your torso, the weight in your sitting bones, let the shoulders relax. Let the crown of your head lift and very slightly tuck your chin in towards your chest so that your forehead and chin are in one line. For a moment, observe the movement of your breath through the body. Follow the inhale through the throat into the lungs. Notice where that inhale first begins to show in the upper body. Take note of the type of pause that exists between the inhale and exhale. And notice where the exhale begins from. Notice the length or type of pause between the exhale and the next in breath. Notice for a moment the quality of each breath. Is there a little bit of a sense of holding the breath? 
a small sense of almost anticipating the practice that we're about to do. So just taking that baseline reading here at the beginning. Now, as I said, initially I'm going to teach this technique without any pauses between the breath. I'm just going to count you through and gradually lengthen both the inhale and the exhale, making them the same length. And then I will let you know before I start to introduce pauses into the breath. So start to bring your attention to the inhale and see if you can make the inhale the same intensity throughout. So that usually means you have to breathe a little bit more firmly at the end of the inhale. And do the same for the exhale. So at the end of the exhale, actually intensify the breath a little bit more by pushing the air out. So for most of us, the first part of the breath tends to be quite quite full, quite intense, and then it sort of trickles off at the end. So see if you can actually keep the breath deep and intense on throughout the whole inhale and the whole exhale. So here we're equalizing the, in, the energy of the breath. Now take a full exhale. The next time that you inhale, Inhale for three, two, one. Exhale for three, two, one. Inhale for three, two, one. Exhale for three, two, one. Inhale for four, three, two, one. Exhale for four, three, two, one. Inhale for four, three, two, one. Exhale for four, three, two, one. Inhale for five, four, three, two, one. Exhale for five, four, three, two, one. Inhale for five, four, three, two, one. One, exhale for five, four, three, two, one. Inhale for six, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale for six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale for six, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale for six, five, four, three, two, one. Let the breath either continue in that same length or come back to a slightly shorter length of breath. But allow the breath a few moments to really settle in and find a rhythm that might be the same or slightly different to the beginning of this practice. And of course, if you didn't manage to lengthen the breath all the way to those six counts, then don't worry about it. That length of breath will gradually develop and become easier and less strained over time. And now in this second part of our practice, we'll start to introduce these pauses. Now, typically the pause would be the same length as the breath, but because I want this to be an all levels practice, I'm going to make the pauses slightly shorter. And I would suggest that it's something that you slowly build up over time. You start to lengthen the breath and begin to lengthen these pause pauses between each breath. So, Let's close the eyes if they opened. Let's find that same intensity in the breath from the beginning to the end of the inhale, the beginning to the end of the exhale. So usually 
bringing a bit more intensity to the end of each inhale, the end of each exhale. When you're ready, take a full exhale here. With your next inhale, inhale for three, two, one, pause. Exhale, three, two, one, pause. Inhale, three, two, one, pause. Exhale, three, two, one, pause. Inhale, four, three, two, one, pause, one, two. Exhale, four, three, two, one, pause, one, two. Inhale, four, three, two, one, pause, one, two. Exhale, four, three, two, one, pause, one, two. Inhale, four, five, four, three, two, one, pause, four, three, two, one. Exhale for five, four, three, two, one. Pause for three, two, one. Inhale for five, four, three, two, one. Pause three, two, one. Exhale for five, four, three, two, one. Pause three, two, one. Inhale for six, five, four, three, two, and one. Pause for four, three, two, one. Exhale for six, five, four, three, two, one. Hold for four, three, two, one. Inhale for six, five, four, three, two, one. Pause four, three, two, one. Exhale six, five, four. Three, two, one. Pause. Four, three, two, one. Now, of course, you could continue for a few rounds with that same expansion of the breath. Possibly continuing to count the breath or just trying to approximate that length of breath, keeping the breath feeling the same way maybe allowing the pauses to become a little bit longer over time. Maybe if you're done with your practice here, you could take one last reading of the breath. So allow your breath to come back to its natural state. And then notice everything you noticed at the beginning. Compare the length of the inhale to the length of the exhale. Compare the feelings of the pauses between the breaths. Think about the quality of each breath. How would you describe your own breathing right now? How would you describe the state of your mind, your emotions, your body. And gradually, when you're ready to complete the practice, bring the palms together in front of the chest, bow the forehead towards the fingertips. Take a moment to plant a sankalpa, a good intention for the rest of your day or week ahead of you. Maybe you're sending that good intention to somebody else who needs it a little bit more than you do. And this is where we'll close our practice today. So of course, if you enjoyed the video, do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, share it with your friends and spread the good, good word amongst your yoginis and yogis out there. Um, if you have any questions or particular techniques that you would like me to cover in more detail, then leave me a comment down below. 
If you would like to find me on social media anywhere in the meantime, you can find all of those links in the video description. And I hope to see you back on your yoga mat very soon, Yogi. And thank you so, so much for joining me today. Bye.